Photography began in Europe around 1839, which means most of Santa Fe's first photographers traveled along the Santa Fe Trail with their bulky equipment to get to the capital city. The earliest image of the Santa Fe Plaza was taken in 1851, 12 years after the advent of photography. Since the mid 19th century, photographers have captured the essence of Santa Fe through the camera lens. Many of these visionary pioneers were just passing through while documenting the great expanse of the West. Others found the open space and the ever-changing sunlight of the ancient city captivating, and they decided to make it their calling in life and in the process, their home. Many had professions in the arts, archeology span and anthropology. Others were soldiers. The lives of these people were as diverse as the subjects they photographed. What they all had in common was bravado and a zest for adventure. George E. Mellon was one of the early photographers that traveled west in the 1880s. His wagon was used to transport his equipment and also doubled as a studio and photographic processing center. Unfortunately, there are no photographs of Nicholas Brown, who was the owner of N. Brown of the Great West Photographic Gallery in St. Louis in 1859. He came to Santa Fe sometime thereafter and specialized in ambrotype, daguerreotype, and glass negative photography. Many of the earliest photographs of Santa Fe are attributed to Nicholas Brown, like this one in 1867 of a woman entering the Santa Fe Plaza in her carreta, a two-wheeled car pulled by burros. The photographer Henry T. Heister came to Santa Fe in 1870 from Sheraton, Iowa. Ben Wittick was born in Pennsylvania in 1845. After the Civil War, he operated a photographic studio in Moline, Illinois. Restless and inquisitive by nature, he left his wife and six children to pursue an opportunity to work for the railroad, where he worked until 1883, before setting off on his own. Wittick set up photographic studios using props and backdrops that delighted many of his Native American subjects. Wittick operated these makeshift photographic galleries in New Mexico between 1880 and 1890. He set up photo galleries in Gallup, Albuquerque, Santa Fe, and Fort Wingate, where the Navajo, Apache, and Zuni tribes resided. Wittick had a special knack for befriending the different Indian tribes. He became known for capturing the essence of native life better than any other photographer of that time. He was also the first outsider allowed to photograph ceremonies. Wittick befriended the Pueblo people along the Rio Grande and had a special kinship with the Hopi who allowed him to photograph their religious ceremonies. In 1903, just outside of Gallup at Fort Wingate, a Hopi medicine man foretold his demise. Shortly after that prediction, Wittick died at Fort Wingate from a rattlesnake bite. Dana B. Chase was a Colorado, New Mexico photographer whose career spanned the last third of the 19th century. His work featured both urban and rural subjects from Denver to Santa Fe and as far south as Mesilla in southern New Mexico. He photographed Indian ceremonies, landmarks, ranching, towns and events. He was one of the leading photographers of his era detailing frontier life. Jesse Nussbaum was born in Greeley, Colorado in 1887. He came to New Mexico in 1907 as the youngest professor at the New Mexico Normal School in Las Vegas. Shortly thereafter, he assisted A.V. Kidder as an assistant at Mesa Verde in Colorado as a photographer and archaeologist. 
Nussbaum became the first archaeologist employed by the National Park Service in New Mexico. In 1909, he was hired by Edgar E. Hewitt at the School of American Archaeology and also at the Museum of New Mexico. In 1915, he constructed a replica of the Museum of New Mexico for the Panama, California Exposition in San Diego. In 1917, he oversaw the construction of Santa Fe's Fine Arts Museum. From 1938 to 1958, while working at the National Park Service as the senior archaeologist, Nussbaum was also a consulting archaeologist to the Department of the Interior. In 1931, he returned to Santa Fe and helped build the Laboratory of Anthropology, becoming its first director. Throughout his prolific career, he captured the essence of the people of Santa Fe. The indelible footprint of photography left by Jesse Nussbaum is but a tiny part of his contributions to the Southwest. He died in Santa Fe in 1975. J.R. Riddle was a traveling photographer affiliated in the 1880s with the firm of Leonard and Martin in Topeka, Kansas. He followed a regular itinerary along the route of the Atchison, Topeka, and Santa Fe Railroad system. Every two years, he would stop in New Mexico to take portrait photographs in a tent studio that he set up. He came to Santa Fe in 1880, 1882, 1886, and 1888. Talcott Harmon Parkhurst was born in 1883 in Middletown, New York. Seen in this photograph standing next to his horse, he came to New Mexico in 1910. He was a part of the Smithsonian Institution's expedition to study the ruins at Santa Rita de los Frijoles, which is now Bandelier National Monument. The self-taught photographer was then hired by Jesse Nussbaum at the Museum of New Mexico, where he worked from 1910 to 1915. Parkhurst went on to open a series of photographic studios around Santa Fe. In the late 1940s, he was gored by a bull and never fully recovered from that injury. Parkhurst closed his business in 1951 and died the following year at the home of his daughter in California. Wesley Bradfield was the son of a Methodist clergyman. While working for the U.S. Forest Service in Michigan, he was sent to Santa Fe in 1909 to do field research. He later resigned that position and went into the curio business and in 1912 was sent by Edgar L. Hewitt, the director of the Museum of New Mexico, to take photographs of the great Mayan monuments in Guatemala. He went on to do other field expeditions in and around New Mexico for the School of American Research. Bradfield later became the curator for the Museum of New Mexico and died in Santa Fe in 1929. William H. Roberts was born in Colorado in 1887. He came to Santa Fe in 1916 and became a partner in the Rising Roberts Undertaking Parlor. In addition to his funeral business, he fumigated for bedbugs, charging $7 per room, and was also a part-time photographer. He was a member of the Scottish Rite Masonic Temple, the Shriners Club, the Lions Club, and the Volunteer Fire Department. His mother was Lee Harvey, for whom a school had been named in the 1940s. When he died in 1968, he requested that his ashes be scattered at the top of Lava Hava Hill, along with those of his mother. Tyler Dingy was a self-taught photographer who was born in Brooklyn in 1906. In 1945, he and his wife made a three-month trip to the Southwest and decided to settle in Santa Fe, where he opened a photographic studio. Digny partnered with local architects and photographed much of their early work. 
In 1960, his photograph of the Palace of the Governors was adopted by the U.S. Postal Service as the official stamp to commemorate Santa Fe's founding 350 years earlier. He was killed by a lightning bolt the following year while on a fishing trip with his brother-in-law, the artist Will Schuster, in Estes Park, Colorado. Both Dingy's Cocker Spaniel and Schuster's Poodle were also victims of the bolt. Wyatt Davis was born in 1906 in East Orange, New Jersey. His father, Edward Davis, was the arts editor for the Philadelphia Press. Early on, Wyatt was introduced to some of the leading artists of that era, including John Sloan, who invited him to visit Santa Fe. That was the beginning of Wyatt's love affair with New Mexico. In 1936, he was hired by the New Mexico Tourism Department, where he created thousands of images around the state. Today, his big view camera that he used for decades resides at the Albuquerque Museum as a reminder of the heyday of early photography in New Mexico. Harold D. Walter took the first photographs of Smokey Bear in 1950. The five pound black bear cub had just been rescued from a fire in the Capitan Mountains in New Mexico. The badly singed cub was found clinging to a charred tree. Smoky Bear became a living symbol of the danger and devastation of forest fires, and for the next 25 years, he was an American icon. When he died in 1975, his ashes were buried in the Capitan Mountains of New Mexico. Laura Gilpin was born in 1891 in Colorado Springs. On her 12th birthday, her parents gave her a brownie camera. From that moment on, she and her camera were inseparable. Her career spanned 60 years. She is best known for her documentation of Navajo people and of Southwestern landscapes. No other female photographer in the American Southwest did as much during the 20th century. She moved to Santa Fe at the end of World War II and died in Santa Fe in 1979 at the age of 88. John Candelario was born in Santa Fe in 1916. He was mentored in photographic techniques by many well-known photographers, including Ansel Adams and Laura Gilpin. In the early 1940s, his exhibit of Northern New Mexico was held at the Museum of Modern Art in New York. In 1946, he received a fellowship to the Royal Photographic Society for his work in platinum print photography. In 1954, he became a cinematographer and received many awards, including an Emmy and a Peabody. When World War II began, Robert H. Martin joined the Army and became the photographer for the Zenith Radio Corporation, one of the major defense contractors for the government. By 1946, he was hired by Los Alamos National Laboratory as the official photographer of this nation's top secret nuclear projects. The Chicago native married Manuelita Ortiz Pino a member of one of New Mexico's most prominent Hispanic families. In addition to his work at the lab, he spent decades documenting Santa Fe culture and history. We are indebted to Robert H. Martin and all the photographers who came before him that forever preserved the history on film of Santa Fe, the city of holy faith.